Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another video. For those who doubt the imprint. Now, yeah, I know I've talked about the womb imprint, the male imprint, and uh, another person who's contributed to the discussion is Master Teacher BGS. About the, uh, about the imprints and all of that. And of course, most people accept it. At least they say they do. At least the people who comment uh, accept the premise of the imprint. And then, um, you know, of course, some people don't really understand it well, but they think they understand it enough and they add in their own two cents to it and, you know, taking one bit and running with it, whatever the case. But of course, you get those people who think, oh, that's some crazy talk. There ain't no imprint and all of that is crazy. Now, I remember a while ago, someone, a content creator, questioned the imprint. A few of them questioned it, right? Because they associated it just with, uh, first of all, just with black women. They like, you know, any woman get, women all over the world get imprinted, but they associated it with that. You know, the argument was, oh, it's just giving them an excuse for what they're doing just because the women accepted it, right? And then, uh, you know, uh, one content uh, creator actually uh, questioned the science behind it and everything. And that's because that particular one doesn't really, uh, uh, accept anything unless it has, you know, some study with it or something like that or, you know, white approval. Let's just be call it for what it is, right? And, you know, that's cool. But BGS responded correctly to it, found, you know, found some stuff, some information about it. And, you know, I was like, eh, he, he did. He took care of it. I didn't even think about it anymore. Because, I, you know, it, it, for me to accept the imprint, I actually interviewed women and I've been in when I first found out about it in 2007, I interviewed probably well over 100 women and I ain't telling what I was interviewing. I would just ask them about the first guys they were with and I still do it indirectly now. I still do it indirectly now. I'm always in research mode. All right. So I'm calling it the uh, imprint. Now, it's interesting. Uh, one of my associates, uh, one of my research associates, I got a research associate. He actually sent me a, a ebook from this woman, and um, I can't remember how to pronounce her name. And I don't know if she wants to be in this space anyway, so I'll keep it out. But she mentioned imprinting. But she did something interesting. She mentioned, and she mentioned rightfully that imprinting was something known by indigenous cultures all over the world for thousands of years anyway. That's why in many cultures, they arrange the first sexual experiences for children. They, they still do that in, um, in, uh, with certain African groups. They still do that, probably, with, uh, probably there in, in the South Pacific. Any groups that still live in an um, in indigenous way or even still have some of the traditions, they still practice that because they understand the importance of uh, a male or female's first uh, sexual encounter. Now, what, as, as always, you know, Western science catches up at some point. And to uh, quote this metaphysician, quote this metaphysician, uh, Dr. Phil Valentine, he said a lot of times the metaphysician knows something because their knowledge is more indigenous. And then Western science will catch up and the metaphysician just has to figure out um, how Western science is framed. It. Now, I'm saying that to say this. So I checked out this thing. The woman mentioned imprinting, but she mentioned the Western person who came up with it. They just don't use the word imprint. They use the word love map. Remember that word love map. And I got a link in the description box. Uh, uh, um, it's a, a Wikipedia entry that talks about a love map. And also the person that started using that term in a series of lectures, he even has some books, Dr. John Money. And Dr. John Money did a lot of stuff for uh, talking about that. Now it doesn't, um, and it's, a, it's the same general uh, thing that I'm talking about on here in BGS and anybody else today, but it's the same general principle. And usually with the imprint thing, because I even talked about some women who've talked about it, uh, the biggest issue is maybe which men or how many men or how many women, whatever. But it's always the same general principle. The imprinting process starts around like between ages of five and eight and really explodes around puberty. 
And uh, Dr. John Money, in um, one of the things he discussed was that's why some people, <laughs> some people have uh, maybe sexual orientation they do, some of the fetishes that they do because it came around them. So anybody who said, well, you know, I can't listen to him. Well, he know. He don't got credentials. I actually do. But, you know, he just some YouTuber. Look this shit up for yourself and see what they're saying. Because even with that love map thing, people, they, you got several people. You got several articles. Just put love map into Google. You got several articles where people are putting their spin on it. But it still come down to the same thing. Those first mates that a male or a female have and ultimately that's based on what's going on in their family life because the first imprint really well the first imprint is really in your dna the first imprint is really in your dna but then it's your opposite sex parent and then you know the imprint is going to be the imprint is going to be you know what were the first sexual experiences like if you get a woman like I saw one example in an article, they use the term love map, of course, but like they use the example of a man or uh, both a man and a woman. Like they say with a woman, you know, if that first person who had sex with her basically took the pussy and was rough with her, she's always going to look for that rough person. Now, of course, uh, you know, um, in the um, from the take I got from uh, Master Yao, because he's the first person to tell me about the imprint. He'll say like two or three women. And you'll find that because usually, and that's usually the case, the reason why it was probably, the, uh, well, first two or three men rather. The reason why that's the case for a woman because okay, she get that first guy. That's a major event. That's That sets the tone because if she gets any enjoyment out of it, or even if she don't, because that's how she is, her subconscious say, this is how sex is supposed to be. The second guy she's going to have sex with, she's looking for something similar. And then the third guy cements it. And see, like I said, for the men, it's slightly different. It's more of a mental thing. Now, that's an innovation that Master Yao put into it. But because uh, I, I hadn't seen anything yet that talks about that aspect, that mental aspect in that way. Anyway, I've seen a couple things with the love map thing when they talk about, you know, what's going on psychologically. But. One of the things there is it still it makes a difference because with a man and this is what the love map example said, one of the articles and yeah, there was so many on there, but it said, you know, if a man feel like to get that sex and I've talked about this too, if he had to like say he had to use money to get sex that first time that first time other than the woman, like whether or not the alpha female rejects them or not. The first time he actually had sex, he got to pay for it. Um, well, honestly, that's a trick in the making because he's always going to feel that way. Whatever you had to do to get sex the first time for a man, that's what he's going to continue to do. If he got to be seductive or if he if he got to be a simp about it, because you get some women who are actually aggressive, you're going to think, oh, these women just going to hand it to him. You know, that happens. That happens with uh, some dudes I label as Mr. Goodball. You know, they might feel like, hey, if I just chill out, you know, because their first experience might have been that teacher or that older neighbor. All I had to do was just look good or something. Boom. You know, psychologically, that's why a lot of dudes see it in the imprint is why a lot of dudes develop. A lot of people develop whatever attitudes they have towards sex and dealing with the opposite sex. All you have to do is look at their first experiences. And for many people, it's not positive. And usually you'll find with the people who can have functional relationships, who can have functional relationships, usually their first relationships was like the context, the context boyfriend, girlfriend, we with each other, boom. They're usually the most functional. They are usually the most functional. So it's, it's, all those things are very important considerations, but I just wanted to let y'all know. Look it up yourself. Because a lot of times people hear stuff and they dismiss it just because they haven't heard it before. Or well, somebody ain't talking about it, but if you look up Love Map, look up Dr. John Money, I put the Wikipedia link in, in the description box, and y'all can just go from there. You can do your own research and see what everybody's saying. And even though people got different angles on it, I think that's important. I think that's important. I think that leads to a body of knowledge. I think it needs to get more out here because then people will understand why indigenous cultures controlled the first sexual experiences of the kids because they knew. 
Because like uh, I remember Master Yao told me uh, there was one culture in um, in Africa, pre-colonial Africa. Shoot, only the top 12% of men were allowed to imprint the women. Let me say that again. Only the top 12% in that. It wasn't about how much money they are. These were like the noblemen, the, uh, the priest, the shaman, uh, the top warriors. In fact, Cousin Tito had talked about that. Cousin Tito, not in the same sense of the imprint, but you know, you get these alpha showpieces, it's big powerful warriors and stuff, shoot. Well, they went further with that, they, shit, they were trying to marry them, had those babies. That hasn't really changed. But understand that, if, we, if people really had an understanding of the imprint, I guarantee a lot of stuff would change. And in fact, uh, it's interesting, one article, one article talked about it too. There was like a ton of articles. I don't even, look it up for yourself. But they, they were looking at it from a religious point of view because they understood it. In fact, that was probably, that was probably the best understanding as closest to my own. Because they understood, hey, you know, they get that. It was hard to break. Because what it does, see, is the whole thing with the imprint or love map. That's in your subconscious. When something is deep in that subconscious, you can't just say, I'm just going to break it. Because the thing is, and the um, thing with it is, it, it, are, it, it sets the tone for who you're going to find attractive. Because in... That's why some women might like a certain type. Like everybody, like I'm always in that conversation. Everybody think, oh, uh, women's gonna like some objective standard or get turned on by it. It's like, that's some bullshit. You know, all these women ain't gonna like uh, Idris Zelba or, uh, or Brad Pitt. You know? Because that might not have been the person who turned them on to begin with. It might be that big old hominy grit eating dude or that slim dude or whatever. And people, they don't go far from it. But as soon as they meet that dude that matches that imprint or that love map, boom. Same thing with men. That's why some dudes like a woman with a big old butt dunk, some like a big old breast assist. You know, some might like a woman because, you know, she was real slim with a pretty face. You know, is what their imprint was. And that's why some dudes, like the worst thing for a dude is to uh, have maybe a prostitute or something. Or they had to pay for it, whatever they had to do for the on the man's side, because then that's what they think. And then that's why sometimes communication in this space is hard. Because I just tell you, my first experience, I ain't had to work hard. So to me, <laughs> that's why I don't have a big I'm not big on approaching or anything. That's why that's the main reason I'm not big on approaching, because I ain't had to do it. So is it actually, you know, it ain't even the best thing I would even try to tell you how to uh, do it. Oh, it's very rare. It's like I can do it. I had to make myself do it, but it's not natural to me. Because that wasn't my imprint. So, anyway. I wanted to share that because, I mean, relationships are deeper. And then, like I said, you always get somebody want to challenge something because, you know, Western science didn't confirm it. You know, which is dumb as shit to me because in indigenous cultures... Uh, they actually had a higher understanding of social norms and how people behave, way higher. Like a lot of stuff, like I know like some stuff they're dealing in psychology and personality types. Now you go to some indigenous shaman or something, they'll tell you all, they'll tell you all the same thing plus some deeper shit with it. So anyway, that's all I got for now, y'all. Peace and many blessings.